Hello again, minions. It is Wheezy. Today, we're going to talk about the now complete Call of Duty Vanguard beta and what went well, what went poorly, and how that might influence whether or not you decide to buy Call of Duty Vanguard when it launches in November. So let's go talk about it. Okay, minions, so I am going to roll in some gameplay alongside my thoughts here. Um, I'm going to try and line up what I'm talking about with what I show in the clips. Um, but I, I capture clips as I'm playing any game, really, um, and I kind of mark them whether or not they're like good streaks, something that's worth keeping, uh, or, in, or bullshit sometimes, especially in online shooters, where it's like, I want to save this because that was particularly bullshit. In the Vanguard beta, I had a lot of, oh my god, this is bullshit clips, and not so many, hey, what a nice, enjoyable streak. Um, so I'm going to roll that stuff in. You're going to get some, some samplings of that. Uh, but I'm going to just share my thoughts. Um, and we'll begin with my overall impression of the beta. It was not good. It was not a good impression. It was not a good beta. Um, there are a lot of issues. We'll talk about them each individually. And we are also going to talk about whether which ones I think could be fixed and which ones I think will or maybe can't be fixed. Um, but just in general, I didn't, re I didn't enjoy the beta. And the best indicator of that is there was a limited time beta exclusive uh, blueprint you could unlock if you got to level 20 in the beta. I think I got to level 17, so I was not far from finishing that out, and I just didn't. I was like, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to play this anymore. It's not fun. I'm not enjoying it. I even made myself play more than I really wanted to, because I wanted to be sure I had captured enough content for the channel, for you good people, and for my own feeling of completeness for this stuff. So um, that's what you'll be seeing in the background is some of the extra suffering that I did to capture gameplay. So um, let's jump into some of these issues and we'll talk about whether or not they're going to be addressed and stuff like that. But the first one and the one that immediately jumps to mind is the sound issues. Oh my god, the sound issues. The And I'll preface it by saying that even in the beta, they put a message up that said, yes, we've gotten your feedback about the sound issues. We're talking to our audio engineers. They're going to be working on it. We're not going to fix anything for the beta, but just so you know, we're working on audio balance issues. Which, okay, at least they've acknowledged it, but I'm sorry, not being able to hear enemy footsteps at all is not an audio balance issue. And you don't get a month away from launch of your game and not realize that the audio is broken, right? And sometimes even uh, the weapon audio from like if you're being shot from someone across the map, like you'll, you'll, the only thing you'll really hear is the sound of yourself getting hit. You'll hear like that. <laughs> of you just getting hurt and then you'll be dead and then you'll kind of see tracers coming from across the map or whatever in previous call of duty games right when you're being shot at you can hear which direction you're being shot from like it makes sense even some of like the hit marker directions were wrong like i noticed sometimes i'm being shot from the right and the little on-screen hit marker direction thing was like pointing left or behind me and it's like those are some pretty core issues to be having in a public beta, which these days, let's be honest, we they, they for plausible deniability, they call these things betas, they are public demos, right? Let's be honest, a month out from release, yes, they're gonna take feedback, but they're not changing core gameplay. They are putting out a demo, they're saying, well, some things might not be right, uh, and then they're using people for play testing so that they can hopefully try and shape things, but more, but most likely, when you're putting out a beta a month before the release, it's just a pre-release demo to get people hyped, okay? To increase marketing. It's smart. It's not a bad idea. But they're not going to fundamentally change a lot of core elements of the game at this point. So, sound was a big, 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 big problem for me. It changes the way you have to play the game because you can't use audio spatially to figure out where people are going to be, to be tactically aware. You know, you guys watching Weezy, Weezy's War College... Audio is a huge part of your awareness like otherwise you have to play very defensively because if you can only rely on what you see You're basically playing the game on mute if you can't I mean, what's the point of having audio? I'm not gonna tr but that's an issue. That's a big issue. I'm sure they'll get it ironed out That's a technical issue. They know it's a thing. They're gonna have to get it fixed. I Would find it extremely unlikely that they would launch the game where you still can't hear enemy footsteps, but it's possible I don't know 
Uh, the other thing uh, that was a technical issue um, that I encountered was I'm calling it a connection issue. Um, it's a combination between connection advantage and I think the fast time to kill of Vanguard in general, which is similar to the, my experience in Cold War. I get killed around corners a lot, right? Like I'll be seeing someone, I'll be taking taking shots at him, I'll start to take damage, I'll duck behind cover. After I'm behind cover, I'll fall over dead. And it's like, the fuck? And we're not talking about like bullet penetration through the wall, we're talking like on the kill cam even, and this is where it's where it's particularly frustrating. Even the kill cam shows him shooting at me, and then I'll jump behind the wall, and he'll still be aiming at where I was, not where I've gone, and he'll still be getting hit markers, and then I'll be dead. It's like the game itself is acknowledging <laughs> that he got hit markers and he killed you even though he wasn't shooting you. So that is something that was systemic in Cold War, and the fact that it's in Vanguard's beta as well is concerning to me because Cold War was built on a different engine than Vanguard. Vanguard used the Modern Warfare engine, is using the Modern Warfare engine, obviously the an, up, an upgraded version of it that Infinity Ward is going to use for its Modern Warfare sequel, presumably next year. But Modern Warfare 2019 did not have that issue. I very rarely, if ever, felt like I got killed around corners, and in the Vanguard beta, it felt like it happened constantly. Um, just like in Cold War. I felt like that happened in Cold War constantly. So, is that something that they can tune and fix? Presumably, because it worked fine in Modern Warfare, which is the same engine, but Cold War it was a mess. Vanguard's on the Modern Warfare engine, but it's having that issue. So I'm not entirely confident that they can fix it. And that's what, the other reason I brought up TTK is because the TTK in this game is fast. And I'm gonna address that, you know, I'm gonna address it now. I was gonna address it later on with design choices. But since it relates to this technical issue, I'll address it here. Their time to kill is a design choice, but it's also too short. Meaning you get killed so quickly that you don't necessarily have time to respond. And that makes things like connection advantage a lot more obvious because if you get killed in a quarter of a second, right? With 250 milliseconds. And if a good connection to an online game these days is roughly between about 25 and 50 to 60 milliseconds. Like if you're below 100 milliseconds, you've got a pretty good connection. If you're down in the 20s and 30s, you're screaming fast, right? If you're talking about a time to kill of like a quarter of a second or half a second, just your connection delay is 10, is up to 10 or 15% of that time to kill. I mean, that's, that's, I don't know if, it felt like the time to kill in Modern Warfare was probably a bit slower. Cold War, the time to kill didn't feel super fast. The connections themselves just felt kind of shit. But it's an issue. And related to that, the, the faster time to kill, the connection issues, they make the game a lot more, you've got to be a lot campier, a lot more defensive. The reason why I didn't enjoy the beta is I wasn't willing to play it in a way where I would have success. Where the, the, the map is very, the maps are very scattered, the spawns are kind of all over the place. If you can find an area that's defensible, which there are many, and I'll talk about map issues here in a second, then you can sit back and defend an area and basically just clean people up, right? Because you have the advantage of knowing where they're coming from, controlling your engagements, things that I talk about in Weezy's War College that are, that are good, but if you just lock down an area, it's not super enjoyable, especially when you're playing objective modes. The game, for that reason, encourages defensive play, camping play, it doesn't encourage objective play, because you're at such a disadvantage when you're out moving around. You can't hear the enemies. You get killed so fast, you can't react. You may get cover and still die. Like, it's not, it's not great. It's not great. And um, the fast TTK can also make some weapons literally useless. And what I mean is some weapons that have a slower TTK or maybe even just a long ADS, like LMGs or some early, early on snipers before you unlock all the attachments that allow you to aim down sights really fast and quick scope. Your ADS may take longer than the TTK of their weapon. Which means that if you're not using those weapons, you're not, you can't compete. <laughs> right? Like, if you die before you can even aim at the enemy, then you're gonna switch to the weapon that they killed you with because it killed you before you were even able to fight back. Like, there's a reason why there's a meta in games and why the beta meta 
was largely MP40 and STG and snipers for the people who got the unlocks and stuff for them more. Because those are really fast PTK weapons. People didn't use the revolving shotgun as much because of its slow reload and its really short range. They didn't use the slower time to kill weapons nearly as much. And that's a problem. In Modern Warfare, I always felt like I could just pick whatever weapon, slightly adjust my playstyle, and have success. Cold War, it didn't feel that way. You're playing with the meta weapons or your disadvantage. I'm worried Vanguard's going to be the same. If they don't, if they don't slow down the TTK, it's going to be a meta-only game, and that's just really not enjoyable for me personally. Um, so let's talk about some design issues. Um, one, and I think this is the major one, I think this is the big one that can't be fixed, is map design. Now I know, I know, we saw like three, four maps for the beta, and there's gonna be 16, 20 maps for the beta. I say that because they're saying 20 maps, but they're counting Champion Hill, which is one game mode with four sub maps. That's, they're counting those four maps, which I guess counts, but so it's gonna be like 16 core maps, Champion Hill, which is another four, and who knows how many of those are gonna be ground war versus what, point being, they gave us, presumably for the beta, what they felt was a representative sampling of the maps, if not some of their best maps, right? And there are too many routes and random angles you can get killed from. The thing that always jumps in my head when I think of that is all the way back to Modern Warfare 2 with Favela, when they first introduced a, a map that had like a lot of altitude and you, could, you couldn't really play tactically, aggressively with the objective because you couldn't predict enemy locations. They could literally come from any direction at any time. Which means unless you find an area with a limited line of sight and lock it down defensively, you're at a disadvantage. And you're just going to get killed randomly and you're not going to be able to do much about it. You can't watch seven directions at once. And unless you have like a fire team of players that you play with that was like trained tactical military and they're all moving like back to back, looking every... It's not... It's not going to be fun. <laughs> you're going to just die randomly or you're going to start camping. Um, so it seems like, and I've seen this before in games, they took sections of the campaign maps and then they just cut little pieces out and made that the multiplayer map. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with that in games and I understand why they do it. But sometimes when you have like an in-depth campaign where you're like trying to make it realistic, you're moving through a bombed out town and there's all kinds of... It doesn't translate to multiplayer. If you just cut out a bunch of buildings and say, go fight here, and you don't specifically design it for competitive multiplayer, like the, I didn't even remember it, the, 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 the winter snowy building map. On one side, there's absolutely no altitude at all. You're just kind of out in the open with a couple of tanks to hide behind. On the other side, there's a two-story building with like five windows that you can shoot from. So if you lock down that side where you've got two different altitudes of lines of sight and like five different locations you can shoot from and the enemy's on the other side where all they can really kind of do is duck and dive behind cars that's just it just isn't well designed like the uh map uh the rooftop map the hotel map it also just has a lot of altitude like people can be up on the roof above you as you're inside they can shoot down through glass in the ceiling and you can and there's and when you're moving through the interior portion of the map there's like literally 12 different angles people can run in it just i you know i saw this kind of bad map design in cold war as well modern warfare's multiplayer maps were freaking locked in to the point where they actually were iterating on them i remember when uh, what was it um the ones with the the one with the buses, the square, whatever. They took that map out of rotation, redesigned the bus locations and stuff like that to make the map play better. Like these are the kind of things you have to do to make a good multiplayer game. So map design, I'm not sure they can fix it. I mean, yes, they can. Will they? I don't know. They, um, bad spawns. Now this could be a technical issue, but I think it's also a design issue because I believe it's related to bad map design. <laughs> Because people, there's no real flow to their maps, so people just scatter everywhere. So if you look at the mini-map, when your team's around, they're everywhere, right? They could be anywhere on the map. There's not like one side versus the other side. Modern Warfare did a really good job of like creating these opposing sides. And you can do spawn flips, right? You can push into the enemy's location and then the spawns will rotate and flip. But there's always kind of this, my team's here, their team's there, and we're fighting against each other. 
and then you can flank and route and try to sneak in behind and infiltrate and stuff like that. But overall, it creates a good flow. There was none of that in Vanguard. Like, I never knew where my teammates were. I'd be spawning, on, they'd be spawning everywhere. I'd be everywhere on the map. One time, and I'll try and put this clip when I say this, right? Where like, I spawned like near the enemy's capture point on domination or like I captured it. Like I cleared them off, I went to capture it. And then literally their entire team, like three or four people spawned around the corner from me, like literally 20 feet away. With, I had teammates like, and this happened a couple of times. Like it happened on the other side of the map too. I just captured a position and it literally spawned two guys there. There's one, there's one uh, clip I have where I was on that snow map capturing a point and literally I'm, I'm behind cover, I poke out, I shoot a guy, I go back behind cover, and I poke back out to shoot another guy, and while I'm doing that, two more guys have appeared in this corner where I was shooting. Like, two guys spawned literally in the amount of time it took me to take cover. It's like the game is like, well, I won't spawn you in anyone's line of sight. So I took cover and I wasn't in their line of sight, and they appeared, and I jumped back out from cover, and there were two more guys there. What? <laughs> like... I don't know. You can tune spawns, obviously. There's logic that goes into them, so it's possible to fix those. Will they? Can they? People complained about the Modern Warfare spawns. I never really had a big problem with it. There would be, if you got out of position versus your team, you could get some weird things happening, but it was never super egregious unless you were on, like, shipment or something like that. But come on, that's just, everyone knows that's a horse, horse fuck. <laughs> um, but these are big maps in Vanguard, and you would be capturing ops and... The spawns. The spawns are a nightmare. Um, I already addressed the TTK. Um, that was going to be the next thing that I talk about. But really, like those are like the big things. So I guess briefly, <laughs> let's talk about what I did like. I still like the Modern Warfare engine. I like the mount mechanics. I like the way that the, the game feels. I like the gunplay feel of it a lot better than Cold War. Cold War felt very much like paintball guns. Other than the audio issues, which are a big detractor from what was so great about Modern Warfare... Uh, 2019 is it was very immersive now because of all the audio issues even that solid gunplay isn't nearly as immersive when people could be like ninja sneaking up behind you you wouldn't have any idea about that it kind of breaks a lot of that but overall the engine I like right the weapon customization is going to be interesting at least as far as giving you options I think it's gonna be really hard to balance and I think especially with a fast time to kill there's going to be a really strong meta that develops, and it's going to make it so that you can't use most of that customization. But, I mean, still, overall, I mean, the idea is okay. So, is there anything else that stands out about the game that I really liked? I don't know. So, share what you think about the beta. What did you like? What did you not like? What were your favorite things? What were your not favorite things? And then let's briefly talk about whether or not you ought to buy Call of Duty Vanguard. In my opinion, obviously you can do what you want. You guys are autonomous beings who can make your own choices. I've already pre-ordered the game. I pre-ordered it based on the alpha, which <laughs> is disappointing to me now. But I'm still looking forward to the campaign, at least as far as a single player experience. Um, but I'm locked in. <laughs> so should you throw money down for... Call of Duty Vanguard so that you get it day one or before it launches and I would say no unless you're like if you're a Call of Duty diehard this is like the game you get every year and you play the crap out of it sure go ahead because you know you get the early adopter penalty and all that stuff you're gonna deal with these issues but if it matters to you day one it'll give you something to shoot at especially since Battlefield 2042 got delayed um, in that case you probably don't really care you I mean yes you probably care that the game should be solid but you're gonna buy it anyway if you're on the fence and you're not sure about buying it I'd say wait and see if they fix some of these issues see if they fix some of them day one right watch people playing on YouTube day one right because there's gonna all every first-person shooter content creator in the world myself included <laughs> right is gonna be posting day one content and they will tell you whether or not how it compares to the beta I'll do the same thing. So wait, <laughs> at least until day one, and see if maybe they fixed everything that I talked about here. It's possible. It's possible. So we'll at least wait for that to see if, if maybe those issues are corrected and it's worth getting. Then you can, whatever, run to the store and get it day two. You're not going to miss out. Maybe you're waiting for Christmas to determine if you want to ask for this for Christmas or Battlefield. Just ask for Battlefield. I'm telling you. Ask for, I'm, I don't even, I haven't seen Battlefield yet. Even if they have a rough launch with a bunch of bugs, just get Battlefield. Get Battlefield. 
Maybe you're waiting for Christmas. Should you get this? Let it, let's see what they do with the first couple of weeks and see if they can iron it out. It could be that it's really good or it could be that it's such a mess that by the time Battlefield 2042 comes out, people like myself are just gonna be like, why come back? I got to that point with Cold, it took a lot longer to get to that point with Cold War just because there wasn't really a bunch of competitive other shooter games out there like Battlefield 5, World War II didn't really like inspire me to go back to it. You know, the last modern Battlefield game is Battlefield 4 from years ago. Like, there's gonna be more competition this time around for, for attention. So Vanguard maybe won't hold some people's attention. Maybe not gonna hold my attention. I am anticipating a ton, a ton, a ton of Battlefield 2042 content coming from this channel because I'm gonna play the shit out of that game. There will be Vanguard content. I'm not sure how much or to what level. And that depends on how much, how enjoyable the game is and how enjoyable the game is versus Battlefield 2042. So I've rambled on for a good long while already. Hopefully that gives you an idea of my perspective on the beta. I don't know how many of you played the beta, didn't play the beta, are looking forward to the game, whatever. So this is just my opinion. Please share your opinions below. I love when people disagree with me because it makes things very interesting and I love hearing differing points of view. It gives me stuff to think about. Um, so yeah, give me your thoughts below. I, I, let's just see what happens, I guess. If, uh, if you guys like videos like this, if you like listening to my subjective thoughts, give me a like. If uh, you don't like something about this, leave me a comment. Let me know why you don't like it. Leave me a dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, if you're new around here, you want to become a minion, you got to subscribe. I don't make the rules. I do make the rules. It's literally my rules. <laughs> subscribe to become a minion, and I will see you guys in the next one.